Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about abstracts and executive summaries as part of the technical writing for engineers series. So if you'd like to learn more about crafting concise summaries in technical reports, please keep on watching. So today we'll be discussing abstracts, executive summaries, and we'll be highlighting the differences between abstracts and executive summaries, as well as strategies for crafting both abstracts and executive summaries. So what are abstracts? Abstracts are um, a summary or highlights of a report and it helps the reader to basically make a decision on if they're going to read the entire report. So you, if you typically have read a sort of research journal, you would see an abstract um, of the of the journal of, of the research paper in a journal and basically what it does is to help you decide if you need to go further and read if it would contain information um, that you're looking for if you and if you should go further to read more about it in the main body of the report so sometimes it could also be published independently from the document so it's important to ensure that you know the abstract contains enough information that can be used um, to make that to help the reader make that decision. And we'll look more at, at an example um, in a short while. Executive summaries are also very, very similar. The thing is that for executive summaries, they are just the first section of a longer report. So typically they can't be detached. Um, they, are, they are typically not detached from the main report. Um, however, it should be an accurate representation of the document and follow the same sequence of the document. So if you have the introduction as well, the, so the introduction, the summary of the introduction will be contained in the executive summary, the summary of the um, body of the report of the literature review um, of, you know, the, the methodology used, the, 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 the conclusions, the um, recommendations as well should be represented in the executive summary as well. So what that does is that someone can take the whole report, read through the executive summary and be rest assured that they have got an accurate representation of what the main body of the document contains as well. Now there's a rule of thumb that says, you know, it's approximate, it should be approximately about 10% of the total report. So that's just the rule of thumb. It's not sort of set in stone. So just give an example of um, an executive summary. And here you can see this is an executive summary of a quantitative risk assessment report that was done um, that I got from the internet. And so here you can see, you know, at the beginning, there's a, there's a good introduction about what the project is about, where it's been built and all of that, and why this um, quantitative risk assessment has been taking has been um, carried out the objective as well is is written there and the findings from the qra study are also identified here and i really i particularly like the um use of headings to show that you know if for example you are looking for information about lsir you know that this is where you can find it but if you're not really interested in that you can you know quickly jump on to safety exclusion zones and get some more information here um, and then also we have, as is required, um, observation and conclusions, um, as well as the recommendations from the study that was carried out. So it also contains, you know, these results and the conclusions as well as recommendations. That's so important. Another thing to point out is that, as I mentioned before, it's sort of standalone from the report. And so it does not start, it's usually used, um, Roman numerals are usually used at the, for, for this section um, because it's not part of the report. So the, the report itself will start from say page one, um, page two, the actual um, numbers that we're used to, but you can see for he from here that these are using um, Roman numerals. So that's something quite important to notice. So I got this from another report that had an executive summary, and this is quite important as well because if required, you might need to um, put together a figure as well to, you know, further drive on your point. As they say, the picture is worth a thousand words. And we can see here as well that this figure is standalone as well. So it's got, it's um, the, the axis X and Y are properly labeled. Um, there's also a legend as well for the um, 
the figure and there's a title for the figure this is so important because um we can see that you know the figure is an fn diagram and so it, again it's standalone from the report if we needed to um refer to this figure in the main report we would need to reproduce this figure in the main report so it should be standalone in the true sense of the word on the other hand, let's now look at abstracts. So this is abstract, as I mentioned before, abstracts are usually used for research documents or, or research um, papers, really. And what it does is, again, it's quite similar in terms of the content. Um, it gives you a good understanding of um, the content of this um, paper. So we can see from this, this, this paper, from this abstract here, that the paper is on methanol synthesis from CO2 hydrogenation and using supported catalysts. So it's telling us, you know, that's the introduction. This is the main body of which, um, the main umbrella under which, you know, the research has then been carried out. And then we can see here that it goes on to talk about what was done in this work, you know, studies um, of the reaction network for CO2 hydrogenation to methanol using copper. It's also, tells us about, you know, the calculation results, what we can see from the calculation results. And, you know, goes on here to talk about the, the conclusions that have been made from this report and what, you know, the results of this research um, has um, um, clearly demonstrated. So this is just really important. Another outstanding um, feature of an abstract is that it has keywords and also this is quite important so um, because we are talking about methanol synthesis here we're talking about co2 here where it, there's um some there's it's on also on the topic of density functional theory and it's a reaction it's a research based on reaction mechanisms as well these keywords are very important for us to be able to identify this abstract so if you are searching on an online database for example this would definitely come up if you search for methanol synthesis or a carbon dioxide so it's quite important you know to have these um, in place and to have it as a to, to ensure that your abstract you know grabs the attention of the reader and um, especially for someone that's looking for the information that is contained in that research paper or in that um, article so if we go on to the tips and guidelines that we can use for that. So in as much as the executive summary or the abstract is at the beginning of the report, it's actually written after the document is completed so that it shows, it gives an accurate representation. As you said, for both abstracts and executive summaries, they are an accurate representation of the main document. And so it's important to write that as the last step, even though it comes up um, first in the um, logical sequence of the report. It's also important to use terminology that is familiar to the audience. So you don't want to use, you know, terminology that doesn't, that the audience cannot con con connect with. That's so important. Let's also be mindful of abbreviations and symbols. So if we use any abbreviations, we need to ensure that they are adequately, you know, um, written out in full before we then use them in the re in in the um, abstract or in the summaries as well. And any symbols, you know, if you say temperature T or pressure P, you know, to ensure that that's that's um, that conveys the right message to the reader. It should be concise and clear. So, for example, for t um, for abstracts. If you're submitting it to a journal, sometimes they have a word count. And so it's important for you to make sure that every word counts, basically, um, every every word matters. So you need to be sure that, you know, you can say things in as concise a manner as possible. Now, remember we said that the abstract or uh, executive summary should be an accurate representation of the document, right? So it goes without saying that we are not introducing new information in, into the into these abstracts of the summary so make sure that if you have any information every line in the in the in in your summary should be able to you can should be able should be traceable to other sections in the main body of the report so and as we've mentioned before you have to place the summary at the beginning of the report even though you write it after the document has been completed so I hope this has been quite helpful for you and you'll be able to use these tips when next you're writing your abstract for your report or um, an executive summary. 
please don't forget to ask any questions or leave a comment below and let me know any other information you would need on abstracts or summaries or in general about technical writing don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel as well it's really helpful and it's really encouraging so please try to like um, share and subscribe and thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video